let's go back to your childhood. I mean, how did all this start? Cycling? Yes, yeah, cycling. Cycling. So I come from a very strict family. Typical Chinese want to push you to study, practice your violin. You know, classical musician, of course. Uh, That's right. right. You played the violin, right? I, I, yeah, I played the <laughs> violin, and my whole family played musical instruments. You know,、uh, music teachers. All all stems from my grandmother, who was a music teacher for over sixty years. She's ninety three, still、wow. healthy. And it was it was a way for me to get away from that strictness. It was it was the key to freedom for me. You got a bike and you a bicycle, and、off. I could, you know, I didn't have, you know, I could get away temporarily from from people telling me what to do. People, my parents <laughs> telling、yeah. me <laughs> to go、people. and study. Oh, what you, you know, your bicycle never put food in your mouth or a roof over your head. You know, you know, you should, you know, stop messing around and、uh, little focus. Did, little did they know, and、mm. now I never let them forget it.、That's、so I belanja them lunch and dinner. I hey, remember what put this food in our mouths. <laughs> Let's 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 thank the bicycle. <laughs> Now, Josiah, you are from Sarawak. Are you from Kuching? Yes. And you know, cats have nine lives, right? Yes. And you've had quite a number of、um, lives, I, I, I suppose. Taken from me.、Yeah. <laughs> I've used up. I've used up a few、oh, in cycling. Tell us about that.、Uh, I've used up two, as in I've crashed. Well. Okay, first of all, we we train at and, and compete at very high speeds, up, up to eighty kilometers an hour, wearing nothing but a piece of styrofoam on our head and, and thin piece of lycra.、Mm-hmm. So we're quite exposed、uh, to to danger in training to,、uh, when we train on the road, like traffic yeah, and cars,、yeah. but also on the velodrome because we we're at such high speeds, we're going、yeah. at such high speeds. So. Uh, I've had two major accidents,、um, which almost cost my life. Which I was both admitted, both times I'm in the ICU.、Uh, one time before、uh, my first Olympic Games, and I broke my wrist,、um, teeth, nose, lost few liters of blood,、uh, concussion.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that was in Switzerland in training, final preparation for Olympics. And then the second time、um, in 2012 December at altitude in、uh, Aguas Calientes, Mexico, where in the first round of the World Cup we we're going so much faster than normal because at altitude the air is thinner, therefore less air resistance. So instead of reaching a peak of 75, 76 kilometers, we we're reaching over 80 kilometers an hour, which the guys, the competitors, were not used to. Reacting at that speed,、mm-hmm. right? And we're 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 like shoulder to shoulder. And a Kiwi guy, a New Zealander, who was not that experienced because、uh, he was、uh, he was fairly new to the sport, transplant from rugby. Big guy. Wow. He sideswiped me into the German, and I and I punctured my lung, broke my collar, shattered my collarbone. Um, and actually, Azizul was in my race,、mm-hmm. and he had he was involved in a crash earlier in the ra- in the same race. So that was the second crash of the race. But luckily, you know, he was involved earlier because the big one was mine.、Mm-hmm. And I spent a week in ICU, punctured my lungs. So there's a lot of、yeah. blood.、Um, I still have that scar, right?、Yeah. So a lot of blood drainage from my. So I stopped breathing for a minute,、mm-hmm. and、uh, they had to puncture my lung. To release the air、yeah. uh, bubble or whatnot. Now you've represented Malaysia three times in the Olympics、yeah. and at numerous World Cups. I mean, how surreal was that experience every time you stepped into a velodrome to compete? It's it it, it was amazing. Look, I won't talk it down. I won't try to be humble because it、mm-hmm. it was I lived my dream and I I did it for 15 years at the at the highest level. So. So to do that, to to wear my flag, so to speak, and to do well, to win and to get the accolades, it was just words can't describe it. I feel so much pride. You know, now I let myself enjoy reflecting. I reflect a lot with the photo. You know how Facebook、mm-hmm. kind of okay five years back, ten. So I allow myself. Whereas when I was still an athlete, I would hide all my my medals and trophies. And now I don't. I, I put them out. You know,、mm. eventually I'll I'll put I'll, I'll build a you know display case, whatever <laughs> trophy room, whatever. But now I'm starting to appreciate 
uh, every moment. And I, and thanks to to uh, for living in, in the technology age, I'm I'm able to do that much better by looking at YouTube videos mm. and all that. I still, you know, now I'm doing uh, I'm doing a lot of motivational speaking because I right. want to give back and pass this mindset, the winning mindset, onwards to mm -hmm. the younger generations. Josiah, what makes you proud to be a Malaysian? Do we have enough time? <laughs> I, I'm proud to be a Malaysian uh, because of, of the d diversity of our culture. We have so much to offer anyone and, and, and ourselves. Um, of course, let's even start from food. Uh, you know, I'm a foodie, right? I, I, ran a, I started a, a food uh, platform right. for private dining. And that's you know, one of the reasons because I, I'm motivated by, by food, right? Um, th that's, that's a big part of our our culture how we connect food's the number one thing how Absolutely. how humans connect and I'm, I'm learning this more and more i'm learning that, that malaysians uh you know that we are um very uh open-minded to to new things 